Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter, joined by me and almost crashed the Wonderbird. So we're going to talk about something that happened to me uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was a bit eye-opening. We're going to discuss the concept of radical acceptance. Now, radical acceptance isn't really a new idea uh, in the therapeutic communities. In fact, for those of you that might know someone that's in the Alcoholics Anonymous program, they have what's called the Serenity Prayer. That is probably one of the most universal signs of radical acceptance. Radical acceptance is one of the few options you have when faced with any problem. Radical acceptance is about accepting life on life's terms and not resisting what you cannot choose, cannot control, and cannot change. Radical, accept, radical acceptance is simply about saying yes to the way things are. Right? Just accepting it is what it is. Now, this was uh, developed by Marcia Leinhen, and it's used in dialectical behavior therapy. So it's an actual therapy technique. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a therapist, nor am I a medical doctor. So if uh, anything I say makes sense to you, resonates with you, please go see your clinical team, go see your therapist, your psychologist, your psychiatrist, and, and have the conversation with them. If anything I'm about to say triggers you to a very emotional place in your life and you need to reach out for help, please immediately go find someone that you love and trust, place them in a firm all around bear hug grasp and demand you take, be taken to help, right? Because I'm, I'm realizing this might be emotional for some people. So if something happens during this and it's something that you feel very emotional about and you need to be in a safe place, please reach out and get the help you need. So on that note, let's just have a quick conversation about what radical acceptance is. So here's my story. I was in a meeting with one of the managers at work about what my career is going to look like after my stroke. And during the course of the meeting, um, I basically said out loud, that the person I was before the stroke is essentially dead. I'm not that person. I can never be that person again. Uh, that person is essentially dead. Uh, I may have days where that person and I are somewhat similar, if not almost very, very close. But I, and I've said that to a few small select people in my, in my circle, but they're friends. They're people I truly trust. I've never said that out loud to someone that I don't have a complete level of trust with. I've never said that out loud to someone that isn't a close friend. So it was a bit shocking when I said it, because it, it wasn't something rehearsed or planned. It just slipped out. So here I am admitting this publicly, uh, ultimately publicly, in a setting that I probably didn't mean or intend to. Not that I'm concerned about what I said, because it's the truth. Uh, and... A couple days later, I had, no, but two weeks later, I had a meeting with my therapist. And we discussed that. And she said, well, that's radical acceptance. And I'm like, hmm, I'll research that when I get home. So I did some research, and I'm going to do a video about it. Because for those, of us, for those of us that have had a stroke, for those of us that have had a brain injury, we have to grieve our old normal to our new normal. We have to grieve our old self to our new self. And it's very difficult to finally accept where you are, who you are, and what limitations you now have in your life. And you know what? That day, even though I didn't intend to say what I said, even though I'm not sure if the person I had the conversation with understands the significance of what I said, um, at least the significance to me. It it's been said. Radical acceptance does not mean I agree with my situation. It doesn't mean I agree with everything that goes on in my world. It means I'm acknowledging what happened is a real event. It means I'm acknowledging that event can't ever be changed. And it, it also now means that I'm not going to fight with it. 
I'm not going to try to push through it when I probably shouldn't. I'm a bit of a stubborn fuck. So when you finally accept that, hey, I'm in this situation, and you stop ruminating about it, you stop being resistant about it, you stop trying to plot and scheme ways around it, you know, I don't like what happened. If I could go back in time uh, using a Wayback Machine, a TARDIS, um, Marty McFly and the DeLorean, any one of the Star Trek captains, uh, any other form of uh, time travel device, I would, in a heartbeat. If I could make it so the stroke would not have occurred, I would. But I can't do that. That's not reality. The reality is I have some deficits. The reality is I can't control those deficits. The reality is some days have less deficits than other days. The reality is some days are a complete shit sandwich. And now that I've said that out loud, that that person that I was before the stroke is essentially dead and will never come back. It's been easier. It's, it's been very um, peaceful in a way. So, and I'm not saying that I'm giving up and, and we'll get into what radical, radical acceptance is not. Radical acceptance, it's something that requires patience. It's something that requires practice. It's not something that's going to come easy to anyone. So, because no matter what happens in your world, you've got to, you've got to take some responsibility for what your actions are. You've got to take some or allow other people to take responsibilities for what their actions were. But there are times and situations where it's not anyone's fault. Right? Is it my fault I had a stroke? Okay, I smoked. Maybe I could have watched what I ate. Maybe I could have, could have, could have gone to the gym. But I'm going to end up in a never-ending circle of coulda, woulda, shoulda. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. I'm not going to get any farther with that. You know? Uh, so I'm just going to accept the fact I had a stroke. It happened. Yeah. And then once you can accept the fact that you had a stroke for whatever reason, and, and it's not just saying the words, I had a stroke. It's accepting that fact intellectually, like in the brain going, yeah, my brain tried to kill me. But accepting that fact emotionally, accepting that fact logically, Accepting that fact, I'm going to use a word that I don't use lightly, spiritually. Not that I'm a very spiritual person per se, but you, you, you internalize the statement, in this case, I had a stroke, to almost, and again, a word I don't use lightly or often, religiously. You, 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 have to, you now have to have a new dogma in life, a new doctrine in life. I had a stroke. And once you accept the fact that there is this thing you can never change, whatever that is, you can never change that thing. Once you accept that fact on like a guttural level, things get easier in a way. Because you're not fighting reality anymore. You know, yeah, it's not fucking fair. It's not fair that I had a stroke. Um, it's not fair that, you know, I got put on a two-third salary for six months. It's not fair that I came back to work and essentially everyone else in their careers had moved on for six months, but mine stagnated because I was at home on leave of absence. And then it's not fair it took me almost another six months to get back to where I was when I left. So I'm essentially a year behind everybody else. Yeah, totally not fair, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can do to constructively or conceivably or creatively change that. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, so, and I'll be honest, it's taken some time to get to the point of just accepting the fact that, yeah, it's not fair, comma, it is what it is, comma, there's nothing you can do about that. You know? And it's, it's taken me some time to get there. Now, we're going to discuss right now what radical acceptance is, is not. Radical acceptance is not avoidance. I'm not avoiding the issue. Well, one, I can't. <laughs> it's a constant companion. Two, it's not admitting defeat. You're not giving up. By admitting and accepting what the reality is in your world, 
you are not giving up. This is not admitting defeat. This is not resigning yourself to some sense of failure, right? And it's not losing hope. It is not the stagnation in achieving goals. It is not the stopping of progress. It is not the losing of self-respect, nor is it the losing the need to be treated with respect. It is none of those things. And if anyone's going to assert that by simply allowing your reality, whatever that is, and this doesn't only necessarily apply to a stroke, this could apply to anything, right? Could be could be a, uh, apply to the fact that you didn't get into the university you wanted to go to. Could apply to the fact that, you know, traffic is too heavy on the highway and you're going to be late for a job interview. It could be the fact that, you know, you've been expecting some overtime at work lately and none's become available. There are many ways radical acceptance is very useful, right? Because radical acceptance is not avoiding, right? You're not, I'm not avoiding the fact that my world is irrevocably changed. I'm not admitting defeat because... Admitting defeat means putting on my morning clothes, curling up in bed, and not getting out of it ever. Right? I'm not resigning my 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 future. I'm I've now gained a new sense of inner peace in a way. Right? Radical acceptance is something you need to practice. Right? What you do with radical acceptance is far different. You one you accept what truly is. Right? I've accepted the fact that the person I was before my stroke is essentially dead. That person doesn't exist anymore. Uh, There's a facsimile of that person in many ways, but that exact person can never exist again, right? I've accepted the fact in some cases, there are things that I can never control. I can't control the fact that I have post-stroke fatigue. I can't control on some days it's easier than others. I can't control on some days it's worse than others. I can't control that I have aphasia. I can't control that I have anomia. I can't control that I have apraxia. I can't control that I'm sensitive to light and sound. I can't control, like, and if, again, I can't control are things that are, and again, going to use stroke as an example, that are a direct deficit because of your neurological injury. Be it you're paralyzed on one side. Be it you can't swallow properly. Be it you have foot drop be it you're using a cane, you can't control that because your brain tried to kill you. Now you were left living in the world and regaining, redeveloping, reestablishing, and reintegrating yourself into your new world. Also, you're going to look at your situation from a non-judgmental perspective. Once you can accept the fact that, one, this is not your fault, you had a stroke. Two, There are things that are outside of your control, which are also not your fault, right? Three, one, or sorry, four, once you can accept the fact what your world looks like from a non-judgmental perspective, you can now recognize and acknowledge what the facts are. You can clinically sit down and recognize that I will never drive again. I will always need a cane. I might need a brace. I might need a crutch. I might need a therapy animal. I might be on drugs for the rest of my life. Once you can acknowledge the true core facts of your situation, things that can't be distorted, right? You're now going to accept reality. You're going to stop chasing reality. You're going to stop fighting reality. You're going to accept what reality is. And then once you can accept what reality is, you can learn how to live in your present moment. Despite any pain you have. And I mean psychic pain. I mean psychological pain. I'm not talking physical pain. Uh, And you can learn how to live in your present despite your deficits, what they are. I'm not saying you're accepting those deficits per se. I'm, I'm insofar as you're giving up. I'm saying you've now accepted the fact that you have deficits. Those deficits are in your life and you're going to learn how to get around those deficits. Some of those deficits might require cheating certain things. Some of those deficits might require adaptive or um, assistive technology. Some of those devices might require good friends and family. And some of, some of those deficits just might require work to get better at, right? Now, once you can accept what is, realize what you can control, you know, look at your situation, get through what the facts are, stop fighting your reality, learn that you can live in the present, you can then have 
the last step, which is your willingness to shift your perspective. If you're not willing to shift what your perspective is on your situation, you can accept everything you want. You're not going to have that sense of peace. You're not going to have that sense of sense of relief. It, 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 had, it had some relief to actually say to someone that isn't a, a, like a close friend, that person is dead. Right? Um, I was actually quite shocked when I said it, about half an hour later when I realized what I'd said. Right? So radical acceptance is just simply self-acceptance. Right? Self-acceptance of who you are without judging. You get to know exactly who you are very clearly. This allows you to be mindful to make better choices based on reality. So, for example, I know I'm sound and light sensitive now, and I've accepted the fact I'm sound and light sensitive. I've accepted the fact that I have to wear sunglasses when outside in fluorescent lights, malls, stores. I've accepted the fact that certain stores I have to wear earbuds in and listen to something to tune out the background noise. I now know when I should or should not go to the mall. I now know when I'm at the mall, when I should leave. Like it's gotten to the point where we need to leave now. Like that's my benchmark. Once I get close to it, we're done. And that's just the way it is. And because I've accepted some of these things, it now gives me the ability to be more in control of my self care. It helps me avoid Fatigue. Uh, it helps me avoid the situations where I know I could become fatigued. It helps me avoid the situations where I can end up too confused uh, because that's happened. When I get too fatigued, I can become a little bit confused. When I become a little bit too confused, I can become a little bit over emotional and then the PBA slips in and then I can't control my emotions at times. I'll end up crying like I need pistachio ice cream on tap and when Harry met Sally playing on my DVD player. So, because you can now accept what your reality is, accept how you need to live in that reality, accept that that reality is something that may not change immediately, um, and accept that there are adaptations that you need to make to live inside that reality, right? you can now regulate your emotions a lot easier. You can regulate your sleep patterns easier. You can regulate your social interactions easier. There's so many things that can be regulated because of that acceptance of what is as opposed to what you would prefer it to be. And trust me, there were a couple of months there where I tried to push through, push through, push through, and it wasn't working. It just wasn't working. Right? So ultimately, for those of you that have had a stroke or had a brain injury or anyone else that happens to be watching this video, Radical acceptance is not surrender. Radical acceptance is not defeat. Radical acceptance is not giving up. Radical acceptance is accepting it is what it is. There's currently nothing I can do to change what it is. So I need to learn to live and accept the fact that my life may have limitations and I need to find the most effective way to live inside those limitations. But it also means that if you can find a way to improve your situation, you will. It doesn't mean stop working. It doesn't stop mean moving forward. It doesn't stop all progress. It's merely an acceptance of where I am and how I am. And that's all radical acceptance is. So again, if what I've said you've enjoyed um, and it might have made you a bit overly emotional, if you feel you need to stay safe space, please immediately go find someone you trust. Please immediately and get them to take you to help. And on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching over the past 11 months, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel up to friends. If you know someone that's going through a post-stroke journey or supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey, please point the channel up to them. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be uh, befuddled, confused, or has lack of balance, someone who has vision problems, they see at a grayscale, they can't see it in one eye, they see a little dot in the world, uh, someone who has facial droop, there's a visual slackening of the muscles in the face. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. 
someone uh, who has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has an inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.